This episode and every episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Ironmonger Brewing. Visit Ironmonger at their tap room in Marietta, Georgia, or online at ironmongerbrewing.com. Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're broadcasting from the Beer Guys Radio Studios in Marietta, Georgia. And this week, we're talking with Monday Night Brewing. I'm Tim Dennis, and with me as always is my good friend and co-host, Brian Hewitt. Hey, Tim. So joining us, we have Peter Kiley, the brewmaster for Monday Night Brewing. We're going to talk about some recent award-winning beers, big stouts, wild and sour beers, and maybe get into a light topic like gas spectrometry or something like that. Just general conversation, yeah, just right? just that kind of thing. Peter, thanks for joining us. Hey, I'm glad to be here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to have you, man. Good to have you. You know, I should let everyone know, Peter is being safe in the studio. He he's, he's slid down to the corner of our studio table. That's right. And there is at least, you got six feet of distance between all of us here, don't you? Six feet, Pete. You That's know? it, six feet, Pete. And man. he's side eyeing me just to make sure I stay over six Understandable. feet. So, yeah. I, <laughs> Understandable. I, I almost brought a stick like Cartman, you know, how he just pokes yeah. people away. I right. thought about it, but you know, you guys are good. I saw one where a guy wore like a hula hoop around himself everywhere he went. <laughs> so there's no way you could get closer. He made like a big hula hoop. So he had his six foot perimeter there. So like when people used to be broke, they'd wear a, a bourbon barrel or a wine barrel or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. That like makes that. sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Peter, how's your week going, man? How have you been doing? I've been doing well. Thanks for asking. Um, It's always interesting in this season of COVID, but ultimately I feel like we started to acclimate right when I say that I'm sure something will change. Of course, but, right. Yeah. Um, It's a good week. Um, We're doing a, another cool ship tomorrow night, so that's always okay. enjoyable. That's Ooh. on the list to talk about. Yeah. All right. Yeah, life's so. good. Can't complain, guys. Good, good. Yeah, yeah you've been doing some uh, collaboration, Bruce, which we'll talk about a little bit more. We, One of our brewers, he was on episode number one, Brian. Oh. Little Cottage Brewing yeah, was on yeah. episode number one of Beer Guys Radio John Show Sherry. way wow. back in the day, John Sherry. So uh, you did a collaboration with him, and he's in the process of building out his brewery. Yep. So that'll be cool. So it should be a good time. Yeah. Brian, how was your week, man? What would you get into? You know, it was uh, not terribly eventful. We uh, we spent a fair amount of time in the studio working on our gear, which is we not did. something we, we typically do. We have new yeah. equipment here, so y'all let us know. Do we sound better, worse? We've got uh, some fancy equipment in the hopes of sounding better and to streamline our process, so. Well, if we don't sound better, we look cooler doing it. We do I look mean, cooler. Yes. I mean, Peter was really blown away by how cool it looked. So yeah, I think I think we're good. Understandable. I can confirm, and they haven't even paid me. These That's guys, right. act, they <laughs> actually, they're better looking, they're better sounding, and I mean, let's be honest. This was a good investment. It's already a win. This was it's a good already investment. Already a win. Yeah. I did break into my cellar. I got into a Breakside Brewery uh, Teamwork Dreamwork, a double coconut stout from February of 2020, which was tasty, and a Founders Backwoods from 2017, which was also tasty. So that's pretty much the most of what I did. The studio okay. and then a few cellar beers. Yeah. Okay. Took it kind of easy. Yeah. When we were in here working, we did get into a few nice beers. It is hype slam season. It is. Hop slam season. So we got into that one. Peter, are you a hop slam fan? X hop, X hop X slam, hop slam and it's not because it's a bad beer. If anything, right. it's I think it's a great beer. It's just in the world, the, the multitudes of craft beer that are offered. It feels strange sometimes to go back in time. Okay, I like it every once in a while, but ultimately, will I seek it out with the same ferocity as I did as a young man? Absolutely not. Understandable. Yeah, and that's one that even when it was hyped or when it was hot, I, I guess it still is. A lot of people still search for it, but I would seek it out. And I got to be honest, it's not my favorite beer just because. That's not my style. Yep. You know, Brian, you love it, correct? I'm a fan. I think the tradition is with Hop Slam is always last year's, last was, year's better. was better. In this yeah. case, last year's was, in fact, better, I think. <laughs> but uh, I thought it was okay. I think there was, in previous years, there's been more of a, a rich honey presence than there was this year. So I don't know. What do you think of it? Well, you're not a yeah, big fan I, of the You know style, what? So I, really, yeah. I really couldn't compare it because I usually have enough just say, okay, I tried it this year just to see what it was. But on the last year's was better, I have one where this year's was great. I don't know if I would say better than Cocoa Bunny oh, from, yeah. from Creature Comforts. Nice chocolate, rich, milk chocolatey, nice coffee tones to it. Uh, always enjoy that one coming in and really enjoyed the Cocoa Bunny this year. I've never been disappointed by any of them, no. to be honest. No. They have been better and worse over the time, over the years, but mostly just, better, trending better. So I That's just good. saw they've got a bottle of double Cocoa Bunny coming out soon, so we'll yeah. have to keep our eyes out for that one. But, uh, yeah, definitely, you know, pretty pretty chill week all around. 
All right. Well, you know what? We should get into beers of the week then. Now it's time for our beers of the week. Brought to you by The Nest. Craft beer and barbecue in downtown Kennesaw, Georgia. TheNestKennesaw.com. As always, we got a great list of beers to get into. And once again, thanks to our partners at The Nest for sponsoring this segment. We do appreciate it. If you need some beer and barbecue in your life, the wings, Brian, the nachos. Oh, yeah. Love those. So check them out if you are in the area. So on our beer list for this week, we pre-gamed with a couple, Brian. Our friend Stan Hudson, who is opening Neutral Ground Brewing Company in Fort Worth, Texas, currently building out. Uh, He sent us a few of their pilot batches. And uh, we've only got a chance to get into one of them yet, but we tried their Hazy IPA, yep. which is pretty tasty, good beer. So, Stan, thank you so much for sending us some samples there to get into. And our friends here at Ironmonger have a new barrel-aged barley wine that is great called Iron Vice. And uh, I get some nice deep, rich notes. English barley wine, which because I'm not an American barley wine fan, but this one I'm digging. What do you think of it? I think it's really good. I think it's solid. And as I believe Peter said, I'm going to quote him, it's flawless. Flawless. So it was that's quite, always good. I enjoyed it. I say that that sounds nicer. It, it was a very good beer. I said it lacked flaws. Lacked flaws, yeah. Okay. All right. There <laughs> you went you with go. the more pessimistic lacked approach. Lacked flaws. To it. Yeah, I thought it was good. I, I enjoyed yeah. it. I had a sneak peek of it, and uh, I went back for another. So, yeah, it's yeah. good. I, I recommend it to anybody who's you, it's, stopping by. It's interesting you say that because lacked flaws does sound like less of an endorsement than flawless. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. What would you think of the beer? I thought the beer was great. And okay, to get okay. me wrong, like right. to say flawless about any beer is something I would rarely hand out. I get that, sure. Um, you know, th- there there are no tens when it comes to beer. There's only nines. You know, you know, it's as high as it goes. I'm not trying to butter you up here too much, Peter, but my favorite beer of all of 2020 out of Georgia was Seven Deadly Stouts. And that was a nine. That was a nine. Okay, <laughs> that, was, that was a ten A 9.99 nine nine maybe? I don't know. It's a, it's the each palate to their own, you know? But. It was without flaws. I'm glad to hear that. (laughs) Good stuff. Well, Brian, what's happening this week in the news? What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. All right, so we've got some controversy in the news this week, which seems like that's the norm when it comes to the news. It was reported on Reddit recently that allegedly Boulevard Brewing Company has a big problem with sexual harassment. And what's worse is apparently people were being punished for reporting instances of harassment to HR, while the allegedly guilty parties were generally allowed to carry on with their sexist behavior. So Boulevard initially issued a statement saying that the charges were investigated and no harassment or discrimination was found. Well, apparently they heard back from a lot of other former employees because the following day they, it, they posted an apology and admitted that uh, harassment did occur. In the statement, they said they would be hiring a third party to investigate all the claims, and they're setting up procedures to allow for anonymous reporting of work, workplace concerns. It was... Um, too many places try to get off by just saying, oh, we looked into this. We got this. And we have seen with other breweries how, how that happens, you know, how that goes. Yeah. And I was surprised that Boulevard did that. They didn't seem to dive into it that deep. But And it's one of those things, if it's one person, the HR department's going to say, hey, you know, we're going to try to protect the company. But when you have a tremendous number of people, which reportedly is what happened that came forward, you can't look the other way. At a certain point, yeah, it's indicative of a problem. So you it is. Look into it, it is. And, I mean, it's a bad way to have to go, but at least it seems Boulevard's taking it serious. They, now, yeah, so. they do seem yeah. to be trying to get back on track. In other bad news, Ockel, I believe I'm saying that right, may lose their Trappist designation. This because, well, there are no more Trappist monks there to oversee the beer production, which is kind of a requirement for the Trappist designation. They don't actually have to brew the beer, but they do have to oversee the brewing. Apparently, this could be the fate for other Trappist breweries out there in the future, as Catholicism is on a steep decline in Europe, and people simply aren't getting into that monastic beer brewing lifestyle. And the current monks are getting older, and there's a number of monasteries out there that are brewing that have maybe a dozen or less fathers there working on it. So yeah. it's kind of scary for Trappist beer. I know, man. Some good beer. Got to have those monks to keep it going. Yeah, yeah. So a bit of a shakeup in beer's presence in the big game. Budweiser and other big names are not advertising in the Super Bowl this year. Uh, those other big names are like Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Instead of running advertisements for Budweiser, AB InBev will put millions towards COVID-19 vaccination awareness campaigns in partnership with the Ad Council. But this is just Budweiser ads. AB InBev still plans to run four minutes of ads during the Super Bowl promoting Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer, Michelob Ultra, 
and Stellar Artois. So the headlines you maybe have seen are a little misleading. A little misleading so, there. A little bit, yeah. Because yeah. so, I didn't think we were going to see any Bud ads at all. No, you will. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Well, you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take a break, but we'll be back with more right after this. Looking for a great craft beer to enjoy at home? Get your beer to go at The Nest in Kennesaw, Georgia. Choose from their 48 taps to enjoy there with some tasty barbecue and take some home with you for later. Grab a crispy pilsner, a nice tart sour, or a bold stout to sit by the fire. Just bring your growler in and choose a favorite or two to take with you. It's our beer, your growler, at The Nest for your brews to go. Check out the beer and food menus before you visit at thenestkennesaw.com. Brian and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks, so you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Remember, all episodes are available on demand, so if you miss the broadcast, get the podcast. Beer Guys Radio is available on all popular and unpopular podcasting apps. Now, let's get back to Monday Night Brewing. Peter Kiley, Monday Night Brewing. So we got, we actually drank a beer during the break, and then we got into another one here, and uh, let's spend a little time talking about those beers. Deal. Bourbon Barrel Drafty Kilt. So Drafty Kilt, uh, base beer is a Scotch Ale, correct? That is correct. And we have BBDK here, and Brian, you actually brought in a bottle of the first Bourbon Barrel Drafty Kilt, 2013, Peter, is that correct? That, 14, was, the, that right? was the year that we started producing it, and okay. then it was released in 2014. That okay. twenty. So we had a 2014 and 2016, uh, and... There was actually interesting. There was a little break in BBDK. There was, and a bunch of people raised heck. <laughs> Did that influence your decision at all? Yes, but I, I want to make sure I clarify that. Okay, <laughs> <'Cause> sure. <laughs> I will. I, I, I will. You've not already be stepped in it, right? Beer, but um, yeah. No, the idea was that we intentionally took a year off in 2019. Okay. Genuinely, because we had a lot of other things we wanted to explore. And so when I remember writing about this in 2019, it turned into a joke that we needed to make more room in our wood cellar. Yes. So, um, no, it, it was, I, I kind of got to the point with making BBDK where, to be completely honest, the younger man back then felt like the beer wasn't appreciated. So I was just like, all right, I'm going to take a break and see if, it, okay. see if it's my emotional reaction or if people want it and they just were expecting it. And we take the one year off. And, of course, people weren't pleased about that. And then. Yes. As a brewery at Monday Night Brewing, we make beer for everyone besides us, in a sense. So there are many times where I joke with my team where I'm like, look, if we made beer for us, it would be, <laughs> be a very different tap list. There would be a lot of Pilsners. <laughs> so, you know, that was one of those things where it was so fun to see the passion, to see people genuinely give a, you know, I can't curse. A rat's I tail. I, I, exactly. I, I, I right? forget yes. I can't curse. So, um, yeah, <laughs> well, once I saw that passion, I thought it was really cool. Took a year off. Get to bring it back, use a little bit of new technology like we were talking about during the break. You know, we ran it through um, lenticular filtration at the end. Once we blended it, got it down to one micron. Really nice. Got some of the noise out of the way. Really brightened up the flavors. The reality is that beer now is relatively bulletproof. Nice. I can't wait to see how it ages. So We did it, Reddit. That we, we did, did it. it. Yeah. You guys, in so, a weird way, did, and yeah. that's the one card you get to use. You get okay, to, we you, get that. You one, get to so. do that every five years. Yeah. Well, and that's our local forum, Reddit ATL yeah. Beer. We're pretty good sized forum. Lots of people come in there. Peter, Absolutely. you're nice enough to share info with us. And I think anytime anything Monday night was posted on there, they're like, "Oh, you can brew this." Where's the room for BBDK? <laughs> yeah, so I remember you saw people were passionate about the beer, and you're like, "Okay, right." Yeah. Yeah. If, they, if they really want it, of course we're going to make it for them. Now, you say it might be underappreciated, but it got some medals really early on. Medals are not what I That's think true. about what, a, what appreciation is. It's always cool to get the accolades. I think that those are more important for our team. 
just because, you know, brewing beer is very difficult. It's hard days, long nights. I like the medals for our team. Outside of that, it was just one of those things where there's so much to explore to bring it back was fun, but to take a break was also really enjoyable. I get that. I can understand that. Sure. And, you know, I guess there are, I, I just thinking back, you know, if you go into like a, a place like Sweetwater, you see all these awards that they've won for beers that they've discontinued. Sometimes as, as little as six months after they won the award, like Exodus, Exodus Porter. Porter. Sure. Like, you, it, that seems like almost a uh, a death knell for uh, for a beer. Oh, it won an award. Well, this is not going to last. <laughs> it's, it's McRib marketing, man. Yeah. That's McRib yeah, marketing. That's, that is that's not, exactly that is, what it that is. That is not what it is. <laughs> no McRib marketing. No, it, it's just one of those things where, especially in the beginning of Monday Night Brewing, we really explored very, not going to say unexciting, but just kind of benign styles and watching how craft beer has just exploded. There's so much to explore. There's a little bit more room to explore. So I was just like, you know what? Let's take some time off. Let's go do some other stuff. 2019 was a year where we did so much fun stuff that led the way for 2020, 2021, even 2022. So taking a year off from one beer. Sure. Good. And I mean, the whole Georgia beer scene has grown up. And I can remember looking at the Monday Night Original Brewery had a Google Street View walkthrough that you could go into That's the brewery. Right. That walkthrough seriously showed like two tanks and a whole bunch of empty space. <laughs> and so it was interesting as you guys were opening the garage to go back and look at that and think not only is the original location totally full of equipment, but you've got this massive second facility. And to still see, you know, kind of where you guys were in the beginning there was still out there on Google for everybody to walk through. Is it really? Oh, yeah. I would like to see that. I don't know if it's been updated now. This was a couple of years ago. I think it would have been updated, but yeah. I, I do remember when they came through and did that, I was like, whoa. Yeah. I didn't know Google could do these things. It was pretty that cool. Pretty you, know, cool. Just, yeah. you could walk through the whole brewery. I did that for a, uh, a brewery that uh, uh, sadly closed down. They were up for sale. You could walk through the entire brewery upstairs and down i was like this is the coolest thing ever why doesn't every brewery do this i mean obviously it's probably a pain to do it but uh yeah you know what we've had both of these different bourbon barrel aged draft of kilts of the two which you peter which do you think held up the best the 14 or the 16 i cannot believe i'm going to say this but it's the 2014 i, th that, that I so agree with you surprising nice. I, I agree with you it's it's so fun that you have this i enjoy these beers like when i think about beer especially the barrel aged ones it's kind of like the bookends or what I remember the most because you start it and then you finish it. Everything sure. in the middle is another project. So it's kind of like going back in time. I, I remember so much. It's like looking at a photo, you know. So I remember 2014. That was the first <laughs> the first time that we took the approach of coming from wine. I always would hard bung things. So I did that with the beer. Not always a great idea with beer because sometimes there's a little attenuation in the barrel. But I remember the year we did this, we didn't have any of the tools. So we used a screw drilled it into the bung and then got a crowbar and would pry the bungs out. And it was, oh, under, wow. it was under such immense pressure that the bung shot about 20 feet up and it would hit the ceiling. And then this fog of CO2 would come out <laughs> and you'd very quickly, <laughs> try, to awesome, like, actually, you'd very quickly so. try, <laughs> so try, try to stick your racking wand in there because all of a sudden the liquid would start nucleating because there was a little attenuation. But all those things, that was back when we didn't really know what we were with we the barrel, because you were bringing your knowledge from the wine industry there, correct? correct? I, I and that's like, all still. It's there's no, there shouldn't be any. Like, the, the idea of positive pressure has been one of the hardest things for me to learn <laughs> from the transition of wine to beer. It was such a cool experience then, and try it now is like really awesome. So thank I, you for that. Talking about the barrel aged beers and that, Peter, I, I'm not sure if you remember this conversation, but years ago we were talking about just making complex beers, kind of. Yeah. And you made a comment. I'm paraphrasing here, but basically there were some things you wanted to do. But the cost that you'd have to retail them for, you weren't sure if the beer drinkers would be on board with that. Correct. Now, you guys have the garage now, and you have the hop hut, which we'll talk more in detail. Do you still feel that way? We have a lot more outlets. I actually saw that you mentioned that the other day, a few weeks ago, yeah. and, and read it. And I was pleased that you didn't <laughs> um, quote me directly Did, on no, that. I, no, I didn't know the direct quote, so I'm like, I'm going to paraphrase this one, sure. I think back then that was more real than it is now. Sure. Once yeah. again, I think that the price points have changed. You know, we always talk about the wine. They definitely have, yes. Definitely have. But also, we have different outlets, and we also have a more educated consumer base. So when they understand, especially once you try it, like, is it actually worth it? I mean, let's be honest, like money is not free. It never has been. And it's a lot harder right now. So when we price something aggressively, it's solely because of the fact that it genuinely cost a whole bunch to make. Seven Deadly Sins was the first beer we ever charged $20. For. Seven Deadly Stouts is the name of that beer. So 
<laughs> Says who? <laughs> the, the, the bottle. <laughs> no. That's that's the ins- interior name. That's that was the, the coat, the, the working name. I've yeah. called it that as well. So. Yeah, yeah. That that beer has its own story, of course. But um, I think that nowadays it's much easier to do it as long as the beer is worth it. Sure. We have famously never overpriced our beers. We only price them high when we genuinely have to recoup costs. So we're not in it for exploiting the market or whatever it is. If the beer's right, if it costs a bunch, good. We also have beers that are great that don't cost so much that we do not price heavily. So, Well, that's talking about the seven deadly stats there. There were seven different spirit barrels, like 666 pounds of vanilla beans. Is that right? The wording was interesting. Um, yeah. There was not 666 pounds of vanilla beans. I think there should have been a comma here and there. And that, um, <laughs> uh, that I actually had a bunch of friends in the industry reach out being like, do you have carpal tunnel syndrome from yeah. processing all that vanilla? I was like, no. But um, Okay, a, so that was a typo on the website then. That, that should not have been 666? It's 666 pounds of vanilla, comma, coffee, comma. It's pretty much uh, everything. All the ingredients. Gotcha. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Okay. Well, we'll talk more about that in a minute. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We need to take a break. Well, we'll be back right after this. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. You don't have to pass on great beer to stick to your dry January goals. Athletic Brewing has tasty, alcohol-free craft beer to help you stay on track. And you don't have to skip on taste. Athletics beers have won awards versus full-strength competition. With IPAs, stouts, golden ales, and more, there's a style for every palate. And starting at only 50 calories, you can still kick back with a cold one guilt-free. Head to athleticbrewing.com to get some brews headed your way. And make sure to use code BEERGUYS25 for 25% off your first order. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Your revolution is over, Mr. Lebowski. Condolences. The bomb's lost. Now, back to the Beer Guys radio show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys radio show. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our great radio affiliates, WRKQ, 1250 AM in Madisonville, Tennessee. Catch Beer Guys radio on WRKQ every Saturday at 12 PM. That's noon. Now let's get back to Monday Night Brewing. Do you have any documentation to the support that that is noon? I don't. I don't. I heard somebody. He told me in confidence that it was noon. I probably shouldn't have said anything. Did you read it in your Facebook anti-vax moms group? I, I, yes, I did. Okay. No, I got it from my horoscope. Too. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That's sounds reasonable there peter kiley so i think when we went out we mentioned we were going to talk a little more about seven deadly stouts what i'll say to people check it out just go look and and see it's on the monday night website the description it's sold out now long gone right very much so but if you find someone out there you bottle share or something uh do it up do it up do a trade for it talk them into opening it at a bottle share yes yeah have a good time with it well peter we want to do a little talk with you about wild and sour beers and Monday Night Brewing now has three facilities. You have the original location we were talking about with the Google walkthrough. You have the garage, which is large. I don't know. I don't know square foot. I'm not good at that. But it's big, big brewery, big event space, lots to go on there. And then recently opened in Birmingham, Alabama, brew pub location, correct? That is correct. All right. I haven't been to the Birmingham location yet, so I have to get over there and check you it out. You guys would love that place. Yeah, I imagine we dig it. Birmingham's a cool little beer town. There's a trim tab is real good, good people. Oh, yeah. It reminds me of like 2016 Atlanta. Yeah. It's definitely starting to blow up. It's got its own little image, its own culture, good people. So a lot of opportunity there. Huntsville's yeah. a – man, I've, I've always enjoyed going to Huntsville. Cool That's people a good place, there, nice yeah. beer. And space, rockets. Uh, rockets yeah, rockets everywhere, it's yeah. Time. It's fantastic. Well, Peter, so one of the goals of the garage, you do barrel-aged and wild and sour beers there. And you have a cool ship, uh, the crunk ship, the as crunk, a matter of fact. The yeah, crunk right? ship, yep. that's right. You got to get some crunk in your system. Yes. <laughs> now, for those that don't know what a cool ship is, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think it's still a somewhat debated topic, so I will talk about it from how I perceive it. Okay. So, originally... 
I, I think that cool ships can mean a lot of things. Um, we used to always joke about, like, you know, if you have a, a keg cut in half or a bathtub, you know, anything Boom, open cool air. ship. Cool ship. Boom. And I generally don't take that stance. I look at the geometry and I look at thermal dissipation, the room itself. Is it a living room? All these different little things. So when we went and built out the cool ship room. We kind of had these ideas where we wanted to have good wild airflow it comes through the vineyard and the garden and the orchard and everything. So when you go to the garage, you see that first goes into the cool ship. When we were designing the cool ship, we used to take these fog machines, put it outside of our louvered windows, and we would see how the air would go in over the cool ship. So we got the perfect airflow in there, have a fan in there, but untreated Georgia pine, the whole nine. Just so eventually one day if we use the room, it could be a living room. So the whole thing, it's about a 1,100-gallon cool ship. The geometry on it, I don't remember exactly, but it's designed to where we can see thermal dissipation in roughly around 10 hours. Okay, and what does that mean? What are you looking for there? So we put our wart in there around 195 degrees, and we will not take it out of there until it's around 80 Fahrenheit. So, of course, that depends on the temperature outside. We shoot for usually anything around under 31, preferably around 27 to 30 Fahrenheit. So when we did it, we just kind of looked to see how quickly we could drop temperature. So we did a lot of water tests, and we did even sugar water tests to increase the viscosity, all kinds of things. So it took a really long time before we actually got comfortable with the idea of using it for the first turbid mash brew that we would do. And the whole idea is for us is to been to do kind of a method tradition and now kind of three-year blend is the first thing that we're going to do, which will be coming out hopefully in the beginning of 2022, which okay. we're going to be doing blending for the first three years. So, so far, nothing that has come out of the, the crunk ship has been released to the public. That is correct. No okay. lambics. You didn't you didn't give a, a shot to a, like an early, like one year lambic or whatever? I think that there's a lot that we could do and a lot of things that we could say, but I want to be historically accurate as possible about what we try to, you know, emulate before we go and do it the Monday Night Brewing way. But a lot of the debate around the beers that you can produce there. It's really just about how you describe them. So, of course, I want to do turbid mash and keep everything historically accurate, but ultimately, I don't think we can call it. Oh, sure, Atlantic. American Wild Ale, Brian. I think I think it's like a method traditional, and it's like levels one and There's three like or something like that. MT. Stuff. So, yeah, yeah. so I'm thinking like an MT one. I think is the Lambic inspired it's just style, MT, right? Or just MT? Yeah, it's just yeah. method traditional. It's kind of what okay. we refer to it as. But um, I thought about doing a one or a two, but I thought the first way I wanted to release it would to be a true three, and we're going to do a true MT three, and then we're going to do MT three Frambois. So, oh, yeah. okay. Carbonic and that maceration. is a blend of one, two, and three-year-old wild elves, correct? So it's the idea of three summers, yes. Yeah. And, and frambois being, that's raspberries, raspberry. right? Yeah. That's yeah. correct. Whole fruit, carbonic maceration, long conditioning times, and then about a year in bottle is what we'll be shooting for for conditioning. And it's hard in Georgia to find the window to use your cool ship, right? Absolutely, especially in the very beginning when we did it in the first time in uh, 2017, that was also when a lot of construction was still happening over in that area, in Wild Heaven and all these other places. So it's been actually extremely difficult to find the right window. It's kind of taken a lot of cooperation from our neighbors and everyone else. So so if okay. you have a lot of dirt kicking up in the air, you really can't use that day to collect your, your wild yeast. You can give it a shot, but I would not recommend okay. it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, this, this construction tastes... Duck. Flavored like with construction. Funk duck. and construction. I get notes yeah. of asbestos and, you mm, know, delicious. So, some concrete. It's like a little concrete in there, a little blacktop. Yes, yeah, really nice, really nice. Yeah. Yes. We've actually gotten the taste the past three years. Okay. Um, Tim, who's our wood seller, kind of wild brewer, he runs the garage right now. Him and I did, um, we tasted through the barrels for the first time. And I can tell you right now, I was blown away by how promising the project looks. Very good. That's yeah. going to be awesome, man. Now, we actually did a wild beer with you guys. The same <laughs> loving group from Reddit that I talked about earlier. We came down with a homebrew club and uh, we all brought our homebrew gear at Monday Night Brewing, did kind of a homebrew party, and we each brewed whatever our system could handle. And Peter has confessed that. <laughs> I think he thought this was going to be just kind of a, a mess because of the way we we're doing it. Correct? Yeah. If you remember yeah. that day, that was a complete mess. Not only that was probably like a top five hangover morning for me. I too. remember yeah. that. Yeah. I remember you and I sitting outside. I was eating Chick-fil-A biscuits yep. and just trying not to throw up publicly. Yes. <laughs> 
just privately. <laughs> and you, you got 30 home brewers excited as heck to brew with you running around there. So All said and done, that was easily one of my favorite memories, just for so many different yeah. reasons, but also because of how the beers turned out. Came out, out great, it, man. Yeah. Celine D on peaches and Celine D on cherries. Showing cherries. And uh, I think the peaches a was Chardonnay the best, too. barrel and a cab. Was uh, that right? That is correct. Good memory. Yeah. To kind of fill in the blanks here, we went down there. We brewed with you guys. You helped us. We had developed the recipe. We brewed it on our homebrew equipment. Then we all poured it into barrels. A strainer. And, and then into barrels. And then, <laughs> so after that, fermented out. And we just kind of took the wild in there. Some went on peaches. Some went on cherries. And it ended up being extremely well to the point. I think didn't that end up getting served at a strong beer fest or wild beer fest? Wild here? beer fest, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's something you know. There's a lot of times brewers are cool about helping out home sure, brewers, but yeah. you don't often with a hodgepodge like this get the results. An exceptional result, considering all the variables going into it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that thing turned out much better than it ever should have. They were nice. Yeah, very it, good. Honestly, it made people internally be like, oh, anyone can make this. And I'm like, no, no, no. You're like, no. no. You just this had a was bunch a of skilled m- brewers there, The right? magic of the moment and a little bit of luck. Yeah. yeah. A lot of bit of luck. A lot of bit of luck. <laughs> a, a little bit of magic and a terrible hangover. There you go. Yeah. That We found the formula, man. Absolutely. So wild beer, what makes a beer wild as compared to, on the flip side of that, we call them uh, clean beers? I think that's another point of contention, but in my interpretation, I like to use botanomyces or just wild yeast in general. So sometimes that can be a diastaticus, it can be all kinds of things, you know, from your, I, I call it the atmospheric, you know, terroir, whatever's in the air, but um, for me, wild definitely incorporates botanomyces. Okay, but some of those other bacteria we have, like Lactobacillus, Pediococcus, Britannomyces, get, them. get those in yeah, there, Yeah, sometimes right? you can, but when I see people do, you know, lab-grown Lactobacillus strains, stuff like this, that to me doesn't feel as wild as much as it feels okay. a mixed culture. A mixed culture versus a wild, gotcha. Yeah. And people also mistakenly, kind of the blanket term, sour beer, that's not always the case, correct? Correct. I think it just comes down to, like, the shared lexicon and how we apply it to the products that we make. Because some of the Brett beers I've had have been funky, have been interesting, but honestly, from a sour standpoint, not that sour. Like, you fruity, fruity and funky. So, yeah, it's interesting to apply that label let blanketly to everything that involves right. wild yeast. doesn't yeah. work out. Absolutely. No, it does not. You're listening to the Beer Guys radio show. We do need to take another break, but we'll be back right after this. Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're Storytime Construction, and we build breweries. We're Georgia's most experienced and hands-on contractors when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding existing breweries. We offer full build-outs, remodeling, and additions, as well as consulting and construction management. Give us a call at 770-733-4343. Storytime Construction. We build breweries. Looking for an incredible healthy beer to kickstart your year? Try Athletic Brewing. They are revolutionizing healthy, better for you beer. Their beers are all non-alcoholic, but you don't have to compromise on taste. They've won awards versus full strength competition and started only 50 calories. Drink more and be healthier in 2021. Check them out at athleticbrewing.com and use Beer Guys 25 for 25% off your first order. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram roger roger what's our back there victor now back to the beer guys radio show welcome back to beer guys radio show if you enjoy the show please consider supporting us on patreon just go to patreon.com slash beer guys patrons get cool perks like beer guys swag and commercial free episodes now let's get back to monday night brewing peter Kylie, monday night brewing brewmaster thank you for joining us here on the show highest paid janitor that's it, master man. of the that's brew it. You've shoveled more grain than most people, right? Yeah. Not as much, but okay. yes, in my past, definitely. Plenty of time, right? Oh, yeah. Well, hey, man, we have a few things we wanted to kind of wrap up our wild beer discussion there before we move on to. So a couple things with the bacteria that are used to make wild and sour beers. They're not as predictable as what we call clean yeast, like the Saccharomyces strain. Is that right? Yeah, it, to a degree. I think it just comes okay. with your understanding, but yeah. And so with that, you may get one that is more sour, or has different characteristics. You may not know exactly once that time is done, and it takes a lot longer to do its job, correct? It does, yeah. 
So you may not know at the end of it exactly what you're going to have. To a degree, that's true. Yeah. To a degree. So what's the other degree there? Well, I, I think with a lot of the technology that we have nowadays, like, for example, PCR, it kind of takes a lot of the unknown, that little bit of magic out okay. of the way because you kind of know what's there. And I'm a pretty ferocious taster of our barrels, so I constantly am, like, tracking their progress, seeing where they are. I say constantly, usually about every six months. So it's one of those things where it's very easy to identify what's not going to work. And then when you identify what could work, it's how will it work? Okay. So then you get into this world of blending, and then you try to put together this cohesive idea. And, of course, everything has to possess intent. So what are you trying to achieve? All these questions should be asked prior to producing a beer. But sometimes magic happens in that weird space. And sometimes, to be completely honest with you, there's so many beers. Where people are like, wow, how did you do this? And I want to tell them, like, I don't fully know. Right. It just we turned got, out but well. we got there, so it we, worked out. We got there, and I think that the, the real judgment comes at the very end, which is how you blend it. And then when it's ready to be presented, is it actually worth presenting? And if so, how are you going to market it? So, all right. How important is blending? I mean, could you bring anything sour or wild to market without doing some amount of blending? Could you just go all out and be cool with it? You can absolutely take something without blending to market, without a doubt. But when I think about the complexities that come from each individual barrel and the nuances that they possess, so rarely do, for the batch sizes that we have to make, so rarely do those few barrels taste so exactly the same, or even if it wasn't in a barrel, which feels strange to even say, but blending is one of those things that, why wouldn't you want to do it? It's one of the most magical aspects of this style of beer production. All the different pieces create the sum, and within there is, like, I think that's where the passion of a brewer kind of steps in, as well as the excitement for the product, because you don't really know how it's going to turn out until it turns out, so... If I got to blend everything, I would, but of course, I only reserve those for the barrels. Okay. Now, you may have answered this, Peter, so forgive me if you have. When you start a beer, do you have a goal in mind for what that finished beer is going to be, or do you decide once you have your barrels and you start your blending? That's a really good question. So oftentimes, when I produce something, it is with a general idea of intent, because we have a 30-barrel system, so it's not a small amount of liquid. From there, things go in different directions, so you take the barrels that you have, you put them together, Oftentimes, blending is from many different batches of different beer styles even. So it's a hard thing to say because it usually I like to believe everything has a plan, but it's not the truth. Okay. So yeah. it, it, it's a it's a Happy accidents, man. Here we well, are. Well, you have a general direction when you're making something. And, and if you don't quite go where in the direction you're planning to go with what comes out, you can calibrate, recalibrate. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just, you know. Recalculating. Uh, <laughs> Recalculate. Yeah. That's right. Jesus, like take the wheel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, just everything needs to possess a level of intent. There has to be some level of intent. And, of course, the ultimate level of intent is to produce something that's delicious and exciting, creative, beautiful, you know. So as long as it ticks those boxes, I'm all about it. But sometimes you end up there intentionally. Sometimes you end up there on accident. Okay. What has been your worst disaster in brewing? How much time do we have? Man, we got we got what about seven minutes? There? Yeah, something. I like can that. tell you that my. Do we words? need to do another show for this? <laughs> yeah. This could easily be a show. Peter Cowley and yeah. disasters and brewing. Yes, well, right. of course, all of my worst beers. Hopefully, no one's tried. But there's definitely been ones where I'm just like, you know, face palm. Like, why did we do this? And of course, I'm not going to go name those beers because I think that there's always a person behind a beer. Whether it's sure myself, I don't mind throwing myself under the bus. But we have a team, and I'm not going to sit here and say that one person's idea of success is a failure because people so readily forget that there are people behind these beers and we're so quickly able to judge now with the technologies that we have and the platforms that, you know, are out there that I just think that whole idea is kind of, it does more damage than it does good. And I think that constructive criticism is a very powerful tool, but rarely do we see constructive in our criticism in this industry. So ultimately, I this beer sucks. Do these guys even know how to brew? Yeah, I'm like... Comments without consequence, you're going to get that. Yeah, know? so, I mean, like, the worst beers that we have made, y'all have not tried, thankfully. Okay. Yeah. That's, well, that's good. Goes, well, once again, it just comes down to discernment. Like, if you're just not able to recognize that this is not the right thing, but you just need to convert it to cash or whatever your reason is for putting out bad beer, I think that comes down to one's ethos of how they produce. But ultimately, for us, we've never taken that path. And if we have... I apologize. And I will say this along those lines. I do know some breweries that smaller breweries, maybe more cash strapped or whatever, more that have had beers that they've admitted, this isn't what I wanted. And maybe they've thrown some more hops in it or they've done something and it's went to market. That never does your brewery 
any good. No, it does not. For the so short bit of money you make, right. let's be honest, there's very few intentional sour stouts. <laughs> yeah. not, not to pick on that, but um, there's a few different things where it's so hard to judge, of course, because remember, this is a business. So people make decisions, but we like to try to play the long game versus the short game. So, Sure. If you put a beer out there for the sake of selling that particular beer, but it hurts your future sales because people hate the beer, what are you accomplishing? That is so much more damaging than people yeah. actually realize in the moment. So. Crazy stuff. It's long term damaging. You don't see it on your immediate financial records. So, but you, you will know. see it. You will see it. Yes, Absolutely. you will. Yes, you will. Well, Peter, we talked some about wild and sour beers. Kind of on the flip side of that coin, Monday Night Brewing has the Hop Hut. Yeah. Which is a fairly new. What's that? A couple years old now? Is that right? I mean, to me, it seems so much longer just because of the R&D yeah. that went into before we launched it. But we actually ended up launching the Hop Hut. I think it was February or March of 2020. It was February. It was, it was right before COVID. Okay, was that, wow, was it, I thought it was later than that. Yeah, it does seem longer. But. What is the concept behind the Hop Hut? Some of it sounds obvious, but uh, I think there's more to it that I noticed when I was reading up on it. It's extremely obvious. It is just to explore hoppy beers, really with the focus of New England IPAs coming out of Georgia. Okay, and there's kind of a musical tie-in. That's one of the things I didn't realize. Honestly, I did not seriously realize until I was preparing for the show. I'm like, oh my God, there's a music tie-in, correct? There is, and so fun story about it is that I create a playlist every quarter with just the music that I'm listening to, and I create beers around the songs. So here comes the sun, which... Here comes the sun, thing? and uh, with a little help from my friends, was solely built around the fact that COVID was kicking everyone's butts and yeah. I was like <laughs> want to lift something up um you know like everything now came from the fact that I was hanging out with uh Win Butler when we did the over under festival at the brewery and got to hang out with him and that was a pretty transformative time and um transformed my mental state I'm not gonna say how <laughs> um, but you were tra- there was transformation that happened there was definitely, trans- there was definitely yes. some bio transformation <laughs> okay <laughs> all right transformation um, yeah. yes no, no but sometimes it's the song name sometimes it's the lyrics from the song you know same as it ever was things like that but so, Ultimately, you know, my father's always been an avid music collector and listener, and so music's always, of course, I think with any artist, it plays a role in the mind state that you're in. So I've always found it to be a fun challenge because I have historically never been stimulated around the production of IPAs. I think that there's a lot to hide behind with so many hops, but New England IPAs were something that we never did well. So I wasn't going to go kind of dog the style without trying to approach it from a classical way, but still a progressive and contemporary way. And I wanted to be able to jump in that space and to hang with other people that thrive there. And so it took a lot of time. We developed our own proprietary kind of house strain of yeast, spent about a year and a half of R&D because we didn't want just to launch a beer just to exist within the space. We wanted to exist within the space in a high caliber, at least something that would make our fans excited and to contribute to that style of beer versus just being a part of it. I want to see more Tiki-inspired beers because, I mean, hot put, the physical hot put is a Tiki bar. It, it is. is. It so is. I need to see more tiki beers there. Can I count on you, Peter? I will take that into consideration. Ta- yes. Your comments have been noted. As long <laughs> as you don't do it on Reddit, all right? Okay. You all may right. have to. If you, you may have to. If we yeah. don't see results in the next couple of weeks, we may have to take to I'll, Reddit. I'll be sending, hey, guys, I found out we can control him there. You're going to send me, like, <laughs> ransom letters with <laughs> yes. cut out letters cut for out magazines. Letters. You know Some what? lipstick. I'll be nice, and I'll use all letters from your beer bottles. Like, These look so familiar. I've seen those before. Yeah. You're not recycling, Tim. No, I'm sorry, man. I'm well, that, sorry. Is, kind that is kind of recycling, honestly. It's hard for the forensics to track it, so I, I understand your path. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Peter, what should people keep an eye out for from Monday Night Brewing? Just keep an eye out for hopefully exciting, honest, intentional beers. I think that what we're trying to do is not just to be a part of the space, but we're trying to help mold the space, whether it's in our state, our district, the country, whatever it is. But we just like to make beers that I think represent where we are now, try to pay homage to the past, whether it's through historical styles. But ultimately, we want to make something that's beautiful, creative, delicious, et cetera, et cetera. So Sounds be good, in the man. lookout for a bunch of different things. All right. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Cheers. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show. Join us next week as we talk with Crooked Run Brewing. We are Beer Guys Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week, and don't forget to drink local. Cheers.